All right, Halls of Montezuma, beginning of the ninth turn, went through this uh, events. Spore troops showed up. Not much more of excitement. The gorillas have moved forward over here. They had an event that allowed them to do that. For the most part, though, what this game has become is it's clear that the U.S. will eventually drive the Mexican national will down below 10. So all it becomes is can they do it before an end of game die roll or before the end of the 10th turn. End of the 10th turn is definitely a hard limit. The Mexicans don't feel like they can hold out that long though. They're hoping constantly, hey, maybe the game will end, maybe the game will end, maybe they'll pull out. And that's not happening. Realistic it may be. It may create this sense of tension where you don't wanna, you know, go all or nothing at the end of a turn because, well, you don't know that the game's over. Of course, that's still not true on the 10th turn. But when you're in a situation where one side has the overwhelming advantage and the other side is playing for time, you know, just trying to hope that the clock runs out, well, it's just not that exciting. Um, it doesn't make for a good game. And that, I think, is one of the problems here. I don't mind games where people are essentially balanced Maybe there's a chance to regain power or whatever, and there's this timer ticking away that could immediately, you know, go off as an alarm. And maybe you're in the midst of setting up your, your grand attack and you don't get it off. So maybe you do want to hurry things along a little more. But that's not how this is. I mean, it may be that way for the Americans. It may make a fine solitaire game that way. It feels all wrong as a two-player game to be sitting here saying oh the only thing that can help me is if that die roll doesn't you know end the game and the other person ah uh, i have almost no chance unless the game ends you know it came down to a 50 50 roll on the end of the game without there being any great strategy or any great decisions to determine it yeah sure there are things going on in the game that could have changed the wind but uh, it just is not feeling like the kind of rewards most people expect from a two-player game, especially the kind of com a competitive situation that a CDG types to tries to foist on the players, uh, where you know you've got this kind of intense playing cards. You're you're right in there in your opponent's face. Well, if you're like that, and that's what you really want it. I don't think you'd want the game to come down to a die roll every time, unless it's one that one or more of the players engineered to be that way. And it ain't that way. It's just every turn there's this chance that the game ends. Well, the Americans open things up with the logistics event. That guarantees a supply. It's not just a supply check. Also gives them, and that wiped out Aristas force. He had 19 steps. He's now got nine. Um, also gave him enough points to move Kearney down. And Kearney picked up uh, Bobby Lee and has moved down a little further into Tamo Tamaulipas, uh, positioning himself into a stronger, you know, deeper in, but most importantly, with the political will cost. It was a hard call for the general. He chose not to, uh, that would be Bravo here, he chose not to actually try to withdraw, which might have been the better move. Instead played a uh, March attrition card as a reaction, reducing the strength, but it was just still an overwhelming U.S. victory, especially with Lee there. Uh, almost would have gotten to the uh, pursuit table, but it didn't, and it didn't matter because he wiped, uh, Kearney managed to wipe out the force. So now we're on to the Mexicans. We'll move a little further on. Well, the Mexicans took sort of a double-sided uh, gamble here. Both Leon and Pillow took reinforcements, seeing the weakness possible. Uh, Leon came down and struck. He had superiority slightly. However, the Americans played the low ammo card, which reduced his strength. He had a really huge unit, like a four-point unit that he could commit which was really powerful, but the low ammo cut 
his total firepower in half. Um, then the die rolls went very much against him and it ended up a route with an extra unit being lost. The Mexican will continues to drop. It's uh, two for the army, one for that, uh, one for the size. And that ended up as a U.S. victory there of pretty major proportions because had this been cut, had Pillow been knocked out of here, uh, Kearney's force would have been out of supply for whatever that matters. It also would have driven the national will for the Mexicans up. But as it stands, the Mexicans look like they're getting defeated on all counts, basically. And now Taylor here is available to come marching down and maybe cut the Mexicans um, off. Yeah, they have this line. Basically, the only way Taylor can hurt them is by grabbing Monterey, which would be a big move, actually. I don't know if that's possible. Uh, basically, the doom is beginning to descend at this point upon the Mexicans. Uh, Scott's not really able to do much because of Canales and Santa Ana's huge force of Mexico City. He's got to kind of stick around Veracruz. Santa Ana could come out and make one last desperate grab as well. Uh, that's about their only chance, but the problem with doing that, with trying to push things further, is what if he drives the Mexican will below one? If he does that, it's over no matter what. There's no chance of a Mexican survival. The Mexicans have some chance of keeping stability and getting that end of turn, so they kind of want to stop taking chances at this point and try to solidify as much as they can. All right, that's going to put it over to the U.S. Well, the U.S. strategy has switched to trying to destabilize the Mexican government because if they can get it destabilized and the game ends, they win. If the game ends without them destabilizing it, they don't win and the chances of the game ending are quite high right now. In order to do this, they push Taylor down uh, to try to get Monterey. That adds an additional, each uh, PW city, each, each political will city that the Americans hold adds one to the chances of the destabilization. So the Mexican response is to call an armistice. Either player can move units into enemy occupied or controlled spaces. Raids are still permitted. And that may just make the U.S. job almost impossible at this point. The Mexicans don't want to gamble, and this is the best card they have to prevent a gamble. The U.S.'s answer was to play close action, naval victories that decrease the political will, more importantly, to increase the blockade level, which also affects the national will, the uh, Mexican government's stability. The Mexicans are starting to prov uh, perform raids. They used the guerrillas there, they used Indians up there. The reading of these cards is a little weird. A raid, if you play a card, the point value of the card is the number of raids you can commit, but it's also a bonus to the raids. So a very high card can be very effective at raids. I guess that's not that terrible because if you're using a high value card for that, there's a lot more you could do with such a card. And it's not like the event cards don't produce a decent number of raids either. Some produce two at a time. So if you're spending a four point card on raiding alone, you're probably pretty desperate without something better to do. And once all the raid markers made their way out, with the Americans kind of falling victim to, oops, not that one. Oh well, I wasted a Mexican card, I think. Ah, well, um, with the Americans falling victim to a number of right actions, uh, now we go to the end turn, and we're looking for isolated markers. There aren't any that I see. Uh, and now we have to see if the Mexican government collapses. And this is really what the Americans are looking for, because the game's so close to ending. Uh, each state in revolt, there's only three. No states by the U.S., unstable government, that's plus four. The blockade level puts us up to plus nine. In a city, that's plus ten. It's very likely this is going to happen, but it doesn't.
plus 10 still puts it as a 15. So I guess actually it's not terrible. It wasn't absolutely all that likely, <laughs> less than 50%. And the Americans pushed it as far as they could, however. Uh, spread of active revolts, I guess we have to do this anyway. Uh, the Mexicans get the first shot, and they want to try to control the revolts that are closest to where they are. Do they want to push them into the, where their troops are or not? That's the hard call. They can't really get them to where they have leadership, which is kind of the issue. So, they will try to push, I guess, Zacatas. Oh, wait, Durango is near here. I'm going to do Durango. And that one goes fine. The U.S. will go for Zacatas. And that will spread. And they're going to drop that over into, I think, San Luis Potosi. Right, am I? Yeah, and that marks both of these. Mexicans get the next one. They'll go here at Sinaloa, which is also going to be triggered, and they're going to trigger it into the Sonora, which prevents Alta California from being a possible raid area. And that's the end of those. But we just went up. Two states, I think. One, two, three, four, five. Looks like six total. Oh, that's must be three states, I, or else I miscounted before. Three, four, five. Uh oh, six. Yeah. Hmm. All right, and now we're gonna go to the political will for all of this. And of course. See what we got. Uh, every two Mexican states in revolt are controlled by the U.S. That's three more political will. But now the revolts. Two U.S. Two Mexican. It's a break-even point. It looks like it's holding at one. Unless I missed something, there might be another raid there, but that wouldn't actually change the value. Uh, I think the last thing left is let's see if the game ends this turn. It's a six through nine. Oh. See? Now this is supposed to happen at the beginning of the turn, and I don't think there's a roll on the 10th turn? That doesn't make sense. Now you roll at the end of the turn. Okay. So now it's the 6 through 9, so actually we rolled one time too many. And if I was really cheap, I would say, hey... Let's not let it in. I like it better where it is. Ooh, there was an extra US raid. It doesn't count for a point, but... And the game will go the last turn. I think this means the US wins. Um, Mexican will is just down too low. They're gonna have to take risks here to try to chance it. But with a political will of one, the government unstable. There's just too many openings here unless the Mexicans can get very lucky. All right, I'm going to load this one up.